Y'all, what's going on, everybody? Y'all, we're Embrace the Globe 21. Yes, we are. I'm Spencer. And I'm Daniel. And we are doing some more from our friend Felicia from Germany. Hey. Uh, we're doing 15 German brands you pronounce wrong. How now, dare you? I pronounce them how I pronounce them. But I right. get it. Get it. Right, right, right. We've never American, had an issue with pronouncing We're, ne we we're never it. ever wrong. We pronounce it how all of us pronounce it. <laughs> we have pronounced it the American way. We don't measure stuff in kilometers per hour. We measure it donuts to bald eagles. Pretty much. I don't know. We've we've dabbled in the art of mispronunciation before, once or twice. We've been guilty of it. Once mm -hmm. or twice. Just ask yep. Croatia. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, that's for another time. I can't wait because Whoa. this hopefully, hopefully... We'll clear up some stuff. Yep, let's see if it does. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hey, have you seen my Adidas shoes? Your what shoes? Um, Adidas, the brand? Oh, Adidas. Um, not sure, maybe you've left them in the car? Oh, and your friend's Volkswagen? Huh? Volkswagen, the car brand? It's a German car brand, you should know that. Oh, VW, okay. Redacted name. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but have been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. So a little update before I get into the topic. I had my wrist surgery last Tuesday. Everything went well and my insurance approved it, so they're fully paying for it, which is great. Um, I was pretty knocked out afterwards for a few days, but I'm doing better every day, and today is the first time that I thought I would try to record something as you can see. I'm having my first follow-up appointment in four days and as promised there will be another video about this topic in a few weeks. But a few weeks ago before I broke my yeah. wrist I made a video about mistakes that many Germans make when speaking English and a lot of you guys asked me to make a video the other way around about mistakes that non-native speakers make in German and that's definitely going to come but there's actually a very similar topic that I've been wanting to cover for a while so that's what I'll talk about today German brand names that English native speakers often pronounce very differently than we do in Germany and some of these brands you may not even realize that they're German so so I made a list of 15 German brand names that are typically mispronounced in English and I'm going to tell you how they're pronounced correctly in German and also give you a little background information on some of them as well. This <laughs> Imagine if this was the first video that we did from Felicia when we were doing the Oktoberfest one. <laughs> yes, that would have, I don't know. We, well, in our inebriated state, we would have probably have uh, pissed off more Germans than we already have pissed off in that one. Very I'm true. I'm predict predicting it now. Very true. But this is good yeah. that we're getting into it now in our state of mind that we yes. are in. So yeah. this is good. Exactly. This video was sponsored by Skillshare, which I've talked about before. It's an online learning community that offers thousands of classes for creative and curious people like the first one is Audi. Most Americans that I know pronounce it like I just said it, Audi. In German, we say Audi, Audi. And there's actually a funny story as to where this name came from. In 1904, a guy called August Horch founded a car company called A. Horch und Company Motorenwarenwerke Zwickau. But a few years later, he left the company and founded a new one. But he wasn't allowed to call it Horch again, and since that's not only his last name, but also means listen in the imperative form, he ended up translating it into Latin, and that's Audi. So Audi means oh. listen. The company is located in Ingolstadt in Bavaria. Hey, Audi. Okay, Audi. I've, I've always pronounced it Audi. But then again, I don't really talk too much about Audis. Yeah, I don't, I, unless they're like passing me at 100 miles an hour. Right, right. Or yeah. if if uh, Morgan is putting his win his mailbox through the windscreen of an Audi while uh, Randy is buying a bookshelf. That's the only time. That's the only time Audi ever comes up. But okay, I feel like I think I've pronounced that as well uh, correctly. I, I don't yeah. say. What, what would you what What would you try to say that Audi Audi like instead Audi? of any Audi. Yeah, Audi, like an Audi belly button. Yeah, 
What? Okay. Audi. Okay, cool. Yeah. Then, of course, one of the most famous car brands in the world is this one. It's located in Stuttgart, Germany. I've heard Americans pronounce it Porsche or Porsche. In German, we say Porsche. So there's like this short E sound in the end. Porsche. It was founded by Ferdinand Porsche in 1931 as a company for vehicle development work and consulting. And one of the first assignments that the company had was from the Nazi government at the time to design a car for the general public, which was what later would become Volkswagen. And so they designed the Volkswagen Beetle, the VW Käfer. Wait. They designed... So Volkswagen is part of what how'd you say it? porsche porsche uh, but i've said porsche or porsche yeah sometimes. not porsche i've not never porsche. said porsche never heard that no never ever ever porsche or porsche that's usually what i could say it as i right. always say porsche to be honest porsche yeah the or last little little inflection at the end i always drop off yeah yeah but apparently it's porsche or or something i don't know i don't know but yeah. that's interesting that they were behind the original volkswagen beetle that's interesting cool yeah cool Which... that's, i love this i love these deep dives they're good mm -hmm. they're good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one sounded super funny to me when I first heard how people pronounce it in English. I actually used to drive one back in Germany. Um, so most Americans call this Mercedes. In German, we pronounce it Mercedes. So Mercedes versus Mercedes. Mercedes. So it's really pretty different. Mercedes. Like Mat there's a hidden Cetus. like T in there. Met Mercedes. Mercedes. It almost sounds country a bit Matt like Matt Cetus. He's yeah. the one that stole the gasoline from the shed. <laughs> Matt Cetus. I seen him. I seen him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, oh God. Uh, yeah, but I would just say Benz. That just yeah. I can I we can agree maybe Benz is is universal. So I will say, look at that Benz. Who the hell says Benz? I, I ain't never do. heard that in my life. I do because I don't have time to say Mercedes or Mercedes. Mercedes mm. is is a very common Spanish name. So no, have you seen the Mercedes? Where uh, the car <laughs> or human? No, <laughs> Benz. Uh, damn. And the full name, of course, is Mercedes Benz. I've also heard that in England, people also refer to Mercedes as Merck. Um, a German will not know what you're talking about if you say that, just for your information. Originally, it was just the company Daimler Motorengesellschaft, founded in 1890. The name Mercedes was added later, inspired by a Daimler car dealer called Emil Jelinek, who was also driving car races under the alias Monsieur Mercedes, which was based on his daughter's first name, Mercedes Jelinek. The name was later also used for one of the car models in the year 1900, and then eventually became the name of the brand itself. This one simply has three letters, but of course they're pronounced differently in English and in German. In English, people say BMW. In German, we say BMW because W is pronounced W in German, and it stands for Bayerische Motorenwerke, which means Bavarian Engine Works. And of course, BMW is located in my hometown, Munich, which is the capital of Bavaria. The company was founded in 1916 and originally mainly produced aircraft engines. It's said that the logo represents a plane propeller and it also has the colors of Bavaria blue and white to show the company's origin then after World War One they survived by producing motorcycle engines farm equipment household items and railway brakes and built their first motorcycle in 1923 and then became a car manufacturer a few years later they then went back to concentrating on aircraft engines again during World War II using forced labor from prisoners in concentration camps and didn't get 
get back into car manufacturing until 1952. Overall, all of these German car brands that I just mentioned are more or less considered luxury brands in the US. I mean, Porsche, of course, is considered a luxury brand in Germany as well, but Audi, Mercedes and BMW are pretty much just regular car brands to us. Obviously, they do have expensive luxury cars as well, but the regular models are driven by people from all social classes in Germany. I mean, that would make yeah, sense. That makes sense. Like, you know, BMW, Mercedes, and Audi, or I guess those are the Chevrolet, Ford, and Dodge of yeah. Germany. Yeah. Like, just yeah. ones driven by the common everyday folk. It makes sense when you work near the factory that makes them. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you don't, there's no export tax at all. You know? Right. Right. It's like, oh, it was made right there. Right there. So yeah, I make that makes sense. But BMV, I would get lost if someone said BMV. Do you see a BMV? What? I don't know. It it, it looks like a W. I understand, but uh, I will so, always say I will always say BMW. So that's why Henning Ven. Henning Ven. Yeah, that's that's his pronunciation of his last name. Got it. So in that in that train of thought, it would be. Volkswagen, I guess. I guess Volkswagen, Volkswagen, or, uh, or Wiener Schnitzel. So V. Okay, cool. All right, got it. Got I'm it. I'm tracking. I'm. 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 Um. I'll let it. I'll. I'll uh, allow it. Yeah, putting the pieces <laughs> together here. Yeah. English speakers call this Volkswagen, while in Germany we usually just call it VW. VW. VW, but even if we did go by the full name, it would be pronounced Volkswagen and not Volkswagen. So just imagine that it was spelled with an F and V instead. Volkswagen. Hey, you were pretty close. Hey, Volkswagen. So v is F, W is V. Volkswagen. Hey, hey. okay. That hey. you know that clarifies a lot. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Henning Venn. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. oh, there we go. This literally means people's car or car of the people. And it was founded during the Third Reich in the late 1930s because Hitler wanted to have a car that was affordable for middle class Germans and that met the needs of an average family. So this was his attempt to make cars something that wasn't only available to upper class people, but to the general public. And the company is based in Wolfsburg. Now let's move on to something other than cars. So this is one of the brands where when I heard Americans say this for the first time, I didn't understand at all what they were referring to because they usually pronounce it Adidas. And in Germany, we say Adidas. Adidas, Adidas. Super different. It's the second largest sportswear manufacturer in the world after Nike. And I don't think that a lot of people know that this is a German company. It also has an interesting backstory. It was founded by Adolf Dassler, whose nickname was Adi. So the brand name is based on his first and last name. Adi Das. He founded the company at his mother's house after he returned from World War I and he actually played a big role in developing spiked running shoes. In 1924, his brother Rudolf joined the company and they founded the Dasla Brothers Shoe Factory, but they later got into a fight, split up and his brother actually founded his own company called Puma, which became the biggest rival of Adidas. Oh. So both Adidas and Puma are German brands. Oh, what? One that they're both German, both uh, <clears throat> Adidas and Puma. That's the shocker right there. Yeah, it it makes sense when you space it out like that because that was dude's nickname was Adi, and if you know that his name was Adi and then Das, Adi Das. Like that makes sense. That makes sense. But, but when you combine it and you see it for the first time, you don't know that the first part was a nickname. It's Adidas, like from right, it, it, you don't see that without yeah, seeing it, the history of it. His nickname wasn't Adi, it was yeah. Adi. Adi, that yeah. makes sense. And um, the fact that Puma is, I don't know where I was seeing Puma originated from. I have no, I definitely knew it wasn't the US, but I had no, I never, that's all my mind allowed me to go down that rabbit hole. My, I was like, 
It's not from the U.S. Done. I didn't know it was going to be German. That's cool. Okay. We know now. <sighs> oh, well. Another shoe manufacturer that many Germans would probably consider very, very German. Like if you talk about something typically German, Birkenstock is definitely going to be mentioned. But of course, this brand is known all over the world nowadays and it's natural that people pronounce it with their native accent. So English speakers usually say Birkenstock. In German, we say Birkenstock. Birkenstock. Birkenstock, which literally translates to birch stick. The roots of the company go all the way back to the 18th century, by the way. Do you know anybody that wears Birkenstocks? No, no. I don't either. We learned about one, but that was in church. But that oh, was okay. it. That was the OG. Yeah, OG you're Birkenstock right. right. You're were. right. You're right. <laughs> but that's it. Like, I would. I don't know. I don't know anyone right now rocking the Old Testaments at all. Mm -mm. that's 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 i don't know any have i owned yeah. any hell no yeah yeah i mean neither i i don't know where the uh e and the h are in there but i don't see the uh e and berken stock yeah there's a there's a there's a sh, there's a sh sound in there when she said it i was like oh interesting cool. yeah oh well we uh, we say the same things we say this it's but if you said that opposed to birkenstock I would be like, yeah, you're fine. Like, yeah, I want to get confused. Enough. It's close enough. Where I'm like, I got, I got you. I got you. I know we're talking. Yeah, about. yeah, yep. Yeah. From shoes to alcohol, this is pronounced Jägermeister in German. Jägermeister. English speakers usually say Jägermeister, which is pretty much the same, just with a pretty thick accent. And people also often use the abbreviation Jäger, like. Can I have a shot of Jaeger, please? It literally means hunt master. Jäger mm -hmm. is the hunter and Meister is master. And it's a German herbal liquor. <laughs> I've got a few other names for that. Yeah. Um, blackout. Uh, yeah. Where the hell did I end up? Yeah. Uh, Tomorrow. That's a great, that's a great one. That's a great nickname for that yeah. shot. It's like um, a, like a time machine to tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I like their um their their logo has to be one of the coolest ones. Right? Yeah. Their logo, what is it? What is it? What is, someone broke it down. It's like if you pull it back up on the screen, yeah, it's funny because someone in in uh I believe it was a bar was like, see the the circle is like oh and then dear and then god. So that's the shot. <laughs> oh dear god. Oh dear god. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh. that shot. Oh, man. It's master and it's a German herbal liquor. This is a German grocery store. You can also find them in other European countries and they even have some stores in the US. I usually get the majority of my groceries at Aldi here in the US. In Germany, we call stores like Aldi or Lidl discounters because they sell groceries for very low prices. In English, people usually pronounce this Aldi. I think I've also heard Aldi before, but I think most people say Aldi. Or they also sometimes add an S that isn't there in the end and say Aldi's. In Germany, we just say Aldi. It has its origins in 1945 when the two brothers Theo and Karl Albrecht took over their mother's corner store and came up with the concept of having a small selection while having low prices. The name Aldi comes from Albrecht Discount, so Albrecht, which is their last name, Discount. In Germany, we have Aldi Süd and Aldi Nord, Aldi South and Aldi North. Again, this is because of two brothers splitting up into two different businesses. In the US, the store is simply called Aldi and it actually belongs to Aldi South, while the store Trader Joe's belongs to Aldi North. All right, yeah, we learned about that from the fat electrician who just was on our uh, channel like a week or so ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Aldi. Okay. Aldi. 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 Well, I don't know, man. The L pronunciation isn't there in the German pronunciation. Aldi. Yeah, that's 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 interesting. Interesting. Because we always, if there's more than one of those stores, there comes a unspoken S, apostrophe S at the end. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I think that's kind of left over from uh, like the 50s and 60s or like 
especially in the South where most stores would be owned by a person like Peggy's or uh, Dave's or um, George's, something like yeah. that. That's just kind of a leftover uh, verbal tick that definitely a lot of Southerners just can't get rid of. So that's yeah. why we apply it to like Aldi's or yeah. Walmart's or you know, pennies something like back in the day. Pennies. Yes, exactly. You know, um, yeah, but I mean, I guess you wouldn't say Walmart's or Kmart's. Oh, I've heard you know, it said like that before. Kmart's? I've heard that. You've, oh, yeah. We've gone to the Kmart's? What? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Food really? Lines. Yep. Oh, yeah. I don't know, man. That's I wish weird. I was okay. I guess, I guess we're just selective when we come to apostrophe S's. Yeah. I, uh, that's weird. Okay, cool. Mm hmm. Now let's move on to cosmetics. Nivea is a German brand from Hamburg that's mainly known for its face lotion in the little blue container. But of course, they offer a large variety of products nowadays. Again, I find the English pronunciation pretty funny here. English native speakers usually say Nivea. Yep. Nivea. In German, we say Nivea. Nivea. So the emphasis is on the E. Nivea. Oh. This is a German hair cosmetics brand that you can find all over the world pretty much. In German, we pronounce it Schwarzkopf, which literally means black head. Schwarzkopf. English native speakers usually pronounce it Schwarzkopf or Schwarzkopf or something along those lines. But may the Schwartz be with you. Uh, Schwartz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it makes sense. Schwarz with the V. With the V. Because any anything W is a V. Schwarz. Cup. Yeah. Ugh. So does yeah. the F still maintain its strength? Does the F still is it still pronounced? I'm I'm asking the, the commenters because that's interesting. Because the like the V is the F, W is the V. So does the F remain pronounced when in uh when in writing? That's something I want to know. Good question. Deutsche Bank is the largest bank in Germany. Deutsche Bank also literally means German bank. Of course, you can find Deutsche Bank not only in Germany, but in other countries as well. A good friend of mine here in Cincinnati actually just did an internship with them in their New York City location. And she's also going to start a full-time job with them soon. And Americans usually pronounce it Deutsche Bank or something along those lines. And my friend always uses the abbreviation Deutsch when she refers to it. Um, so like she said, I got a job offer from Deutsch which is just really funny to me because that literally just means German. <laughs> <laughs> this is a German manufacturer of high-end domestic appliances and it's not exactly pronounced wrong in English, but English native speakers usually say something like Mila, Mila. Um, so it usually sounds more like an A in the end, whereas in German we say Miele. Miele. So the last letter is just a little bit different. And Miele really does stand for quality. If you invest in a Miele dishwasher or washing machine, you just know that it's going to be a good product and it's going to last. This is something that everyone oh knows and loves, hopefully. Maybe not everyone knew that Haribo is actually German. We pronounce it Haribo. Haribo. And again, the name originates in the name of the founder of the company, which was Hans Riegel. And he was from the city of Bonn in Germany. So Hans Riegel from Bonn. And he always took the first two letters, put them together, and it oh. became Haribo. Hans Riegel Bonn. Haribo. <laughs> huh. Haribo. Which Haribo. Uh, translates to, uh, if you get the sugar-free one, um, Diarrhea. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just sugar-free one, diarrhea. Yeah. So I, I remember on your channel you put a uh did a short <laughs> Just reading it. Reading out those uh, those reviews. That was awesome. I wish I continued that. They didn't get any movement, so I stopped. Um yeah. go back to that where it had the, the, the gummy bears on the screen. What was that at the uh, at the gold barren? Gold Baron. Gold like, Baron. Ah, ah, okay. Does that mean gold bear? Is that is that what that means? Anyway, I'm reading too much into the packaging. So. <laughs> you should be reading more reading more into the uh uh reviews. Dude, 
dudes, <laughs> guys, the sugar free, the sugar free gummy bears do not sit well with a lot of people. Mm -mm. Do Heck yourself no. a favor. Next time you're on the, the toilet, read the reviews. Amazon reviews, sugar free gummy bears. Yep. Haribo, Hans Riegel Bonn, Haribo. And last but not least, let's talk about a company that is not doing super well during these times, but it's one of the largest companies in Germany and second largest airline in Europe. And maybe you've flown with them before. In English, people usually say Lufthansa, but in German, we say Lufthansa. So the emphasis on the first syllable, Lufthansa versus Lufthansa. Hey, that was a heck of a video right there. Well. And now hear me out. Now that I know how to say it, will I continue to say Volkswagen? Probably. Now, uh, I, I, will I know how to pronounce it? It's Volkswagen. Got it. Volkswagen. It's interesting. Adidas. Guys, I'm too set in my ways. I can start teaching my son how to pronounce this stuff, this stuff right. I'm too set in my ways. You're too I'm too far gone. Can't be yeah. reached, but I appreciate yeah knowing that yes i am saying it wrong if someone ever is like hey did you see my new adidas and they're like what'd you say oh i'm sorry adidas mm -hmm. and then we can clear up the confusion and move on with our lives yeah but this is good to know how to correctly say something mm -hmm. so we pronounce it nivea nivea Niv nivea yeah nivea that's interesting yeah hey man that's why I love this channel. That's why I love learning new stuff. It's just that these these quirks. Oh, wars are going to get started over this shit. But right, like, it's good to know. That's <laughs> now we know. Now we, now know, we know how to. Now we know when we have uh, either go over to Germany or have a German friend visit. We yep. can have have conversations be a little bit easier about shoes, cars, gummy bears, and we'll be good to go. And Jaeger. What is it? Ja Jagermeister or Jager. something like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, it's all about that, guys. This is what this channel is. It's bringing us some knowledge. We're discovering. Yeah. Boy, what if you mixed uh, Jagger and uh, sugar-free ha ha Haribo? I don't know what that would do. That would send you. <laughs> I don't know. That would that would be on par with a cleanse. I'm sure, that's how a black hole was made. <laughs> that's too much. Man. How do you throw up and diarrhea at the same time? It leaves a vacuum in the middle. Two forces exiting. <laughs> I don't know how you could do it, but yeah. thanks for putting up with our sense of humor, guys. <laughs> oh, oh man. Consider subscribing and watching another video. Wash your hands, grab your toes, like butt, blow your nose, brace a globe. Unplug and do something legendary, guys. See y'all next time. Later. Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.